Some of the strongest timber on earth isn't new. It's old, old enough to be pulled from frozen soil or wet ground after centuries and still hold weight. That's not an accident. That's lost Viking know-how. And if uncovering forgotten survival wisdom like this fires you up, subscribe to Prepper's Survival Blueprint now, because this channel exists to keep hard-earned knowledge alive, not buried. This isn't nostalgia. It's performance. And modern builders quietly lost this edge. For Viking and medieval builders, wood wasn't a weekend project. It was shelter, transport, tools, storage, defence and income. When a beam failed, people didn't complain. They froze. They starved. They died. So they didn't ask how wood looked. They asked how long it would last. Rot was the enemy. Moisture fed it. Air helped it spread. And surface coatings weren't enough. The solution had to go inside the wood. Deep. That's where this method begins. The backbone of the Viking dip was pine tar. Thick. Black. Smoky, made by slowly heating pine stumps in low oxygen pits. This wasn't guesswork. It was controlled chemistry using fire and time. Viking ships crossed icy oceans sealed with it. Farm wagons rolled for years without rotting axles. Support beams stayed solid in damp soil. Here's why it worked. When pine tar is warm gently, it thins just enough to penetrate wood fibres. It doesn't sit on the surface. It moves inward. Once there, it blocks moisture and oxygen. That shuts down rot before it can start. No fungus thrives in a sealed, oxygen-starved environment. Modern builders spray coatings. Vikings changed the wood itself. Pine tar alone was powerful but heavy, too thick for full saturation. The Vikings solved this with boiled linseed oil, pressed from flax and used across Europe for centuries. Mixed roughly equal parts with pine tar, linseed oil thinned the blend and carried it deeper into the grain. It acted like a transport system, pulling protection where brushes alone couldn't reach. Then something important happened. As the oil cured, it didn't harden into a shell. It stayed flexible. That mattered. Wood expands and contracts with weather, you know. Brittle coatings crack. This mixture moved with the wood. Warm wood. Warm mixture. Apply slowly. The wood absorbs it on its own terms. One coat improved lifespan. Two coats fortified it. Three coats made it nearly legendary. This is where most modern explanations stop. Vikings didn't. They added fine, sifted wood ash. This wasn't superstition. It was chemistry learned through survival. Wood ash is alkaline. Fungi hate alkaline environments. Adding ash altered the internal conditions of the wood itself, creating a hostile zone for decay. Ash also added minerals, increased abrasion resistance, and produced that dull matte finish archaeologists still find on preserved beams today. The mixture was stirred slowly until it reached a thin, muddy consistency. Not paste, not sludge, something that still penetrated but left mineral protection behind once cured. 
That's why posts survived in wet soil for decades. Modern treatments focus on coating, but the Vikings, well, they focused on saturation. Small beams were fully submerged in heated troughs, while larger timbers were rolled again and again through the mixture until absorption stopped. That moment really mattered. When the wood stopped drinking, it was done. No pressure chambers, no factory chemicals, no shortcuts, just patience. That's why this method worked. It wasn't cosmetic, it was complete. Many modern wood treatments rely on surface barriers or chemicals that, you know, slowly leach out. Some of these actually weaken the fibres, others end up contaminating the soil, and, well, some just fail as soon as they crack. The Viking dip, on the other hand, bonded with the grain itself. It aged slowly. It didn't poison the land. It didn't fight the wood's nature. It respected it. That's why it still works today for things like fence posts, tool handles, garden beds, outdoor furniture, cabin siding, and structural beams, especially for off-grid builders and preppers who really value durability over convenience. And here's the survival reality. If supply chains break tomorrow, this method still works. The materials are simple. The process is human scale. There's just no dependence on modern industry. This wasn't primitive thinking. It was honestly precise problem-solving by people who just couldn't afford failure. They weren't chasing trends. They were chasing longevity, and they succeeded. This wood dip actually outlasted empires, weather cycles, and, well, modern shortcuts. That alone should make us pay attention. If this episode gave you something useful, share it with someone who still believes newer always means better. And don't forget to subscribe to Prepper's Survival Blueprint for more forgotten techniques that kept people alive long before convenience existed. Some knowledge survives centuries because it deserves to.